Hi, uh, today I'm putting back together my Zia pot fridge. It's an evaporative cooling fridge based around a clay pot. Uh, it's worked pretty well for me for six months since March or April this year. Uh, it just flooded the other day, so this is a chance for me to remake it. Um, and I'm going to share that. The Zia pot fridge is fairly simple. It features a large clay pot inside of which you put sand uh, and a smaller clay pot. So one clay pot fits inside the other and underneath underneath the one and surrounding it is wet sand. It doesn't, be wet, it doesn't have to be wet when you put it in but it's wet for use. The water then evaporates from the surface of the clay pot uh, out of the sand which you have to keep wet over time and that gives you a cooling effect. So I was lucky enough to score this big clay pot. It's about uh, 20 inches or more across. Uh, a lid which is a, a ceramic plate, uh, glazed actually which is not ideal but it's all I could get. Uh, and an internal pot which I can't show you much of because at the moment I'm gluing some uh, some circles of um, caramat of, of foam to the top of just to make a seal with the lid. That's not so much for a, from a thermal point of view but just to stop the wood lights going in. And you can see I've got these two buckets of sands here that I've just taken it apart. It's an enormously heavy construction when finished so if you're going to make one make it where you're not going to move it from again. Okay, I'm just going to put the clay pot in position and start filling with sand. So I've put the clay pot here on the north side of my house, which is anyway the coolest side. I've stood it on three concrete blocks just to keep it off the ground and to out of the reach of rats and to deter other creepy crawly insects and things from getting in it. It is in fact uh, about 19 and a half inches across. Uh, I've plugged the hole in the bottom, I don't know if you can see, with a little piece of gaffer tape. That seems to work fine. Uh, it's about 13 inches deep, the pot. Um, so I'm going to fill it with wet sand now. My sand happens to be wet already because it just came out of the pot. Uh, you can fill it with dry sand and wet it after. Okay. So I've just put a couple of inches of sand in the bottom of the big pot, shaping it to accommodate the little pot. Uh, and the aim is to bring the both rims of both pots up to a, a level. There we are then, the little pot sitting in the big pot, slightly proud of the big pot. I'll give it a little press down again in a moment, but slightly proud is better than underneath. Uh, it's. I've run my fingers around the outside to make sure the gap's about even all the way around the outside and at this point it would be easier to fill that narrow gap with dry sand only I haven't got any so I'll persevere with some wet sand. Um, the pots aren't round of course either of them not completely so that gap is a bit variable. So with incredible patience I filled the Zia pot the gap between the pots up with sand. Uh, disconcertingly I have quite a lot of sand left from from the last time I made the pot. I suspect what I put in will subside into various spaces. So two tips, it's much easier to do with dry sand and wet sand because dry sand sprinkles in much easier. Uh, and it's much easier to do before you s glue on any sealing strips like the, the caramat strips I put on the top. Uh, I used the lid to stop getting sand in the internal pot while I filled around the outside. And I filled it a bit like tightening a wheel. I put some down one side and then some down the opposite side and then some down the third side and some down the fourth side until it was all full up. I didn't particularly ram it in, uh, just kind of tried to make sure I wasn't leaving any holes. Okay. So yeah, that's the side. I have sand left over in a bucket, which I'm sure will find its way in there. It's a real art to keep in the fridge just wet enough, to keep in the Zia pot wet enough. Um, if you put too much water in, it sand kind of turns to a liquid and the pot, the internal pot will float up. That's what happened when uh, the rain water got into this pot. Um, so that's an art, you kind of keep it wet enough. 
Sand is a really good uh, store of, of heat. It's got a really high specific heat capacity and it's a really bad conductor. So it's a really good medium in which to store heat or to store cool, if you like. Um, I got my instructions from the Zia pot. Let me just put the lid on to so give you an impression. Yeah, that's with, with the lid on. I got my instructions for the Zia pot from an instructable online. It was really pretty good. I adapted it slightly for my own conditions and the pots I could get. Uh, and I also looked at designs, pictures on the internet and read the story of the the guy who reintroduced these to Africa to keep to save food waste, particularly for market traders in Africa. When the sun's on it, I keep the outside of the clay pot wet too. Keep the dribble in water, the dribble water in the morning down the, the the layer of sand between the pots, and I spray the outside of the pot with water. Uh, and throughout the six months I was using it maintained a temperature five or six degrees less than the ambient temperature and the ambient temperature around the north side of my house is fairly low anyway it doesn't get any sunshine so it was doing it was doing well as a as a as a cool box if you like in fact it outperformed just a standard polystyrene cool box by a couple of degrees two or three degrees uh, one extra measure I do is I put a wet towel over the top of it in on Sunday when the Sun does come on it now you can see there's a little bit of evening Sun on it uh, from the west um, so I put a, a, a damp towel over the top. Uh, it adds an extra kind of extra layer of, of stuff and more more water to evaporate. Yeah, I think that's it. All I have to do now is fill it with food. Okay. One tiny last word as a sort of decoration, but also so that you're not constantly getting sand in things. I, I seal that, or not seal, but I put a row of decorative pebbles around that gap between the two pots at the top. I'm not putting them in at the moment because I suspect the sand will subside a bit and I'll lose my pebbles down the side as well and they're not quite as good uh, a, a cool store as the sand. So but when it's finished I'll just put a row of pebbles sitting in the sand around the top as a sort of decorative, decorative seal to stop contamination. <laughs>